Hello, welcome back. Today we'll discuss about uh, water treatment filtration. So this is an important treatment system after uh, the sedimentation and coagulation. So sedimentation and coagulation where large particles are removed and some fine particles are also removed through coagulation practices. And what are the sludge generated is separated out. So this is the first component uh, of the treatment system. Now we'll talk about uh, this uh, sand filtration. So mainly this filtration is used uh, uh, through a filter bed, a filter medium rather, we call as a sand. And then we'll uh, keep gravel as a supporting medium. And uh, we at the bottom we keep a, a strainer having some openings there. And then at the bottom, you keep uh, some perforated pipes. So when uh, the raw water is passed through this bed, it passes through the voids of the sand and through the gravel, larger voids are there, there, and passes through the strainer and enter into the, what we call as under drain pipes. Then it comes out from the bottom at the exit, right? So this is the, the sand filtration part. So sometimes we can use a single uh, filter medium. Then we call it a sing single sand, uh, single sand filter, uh, uh, a single filtration. Or sometimes we may use more than one or two uh, filter beds uh, within the same filter. Then we'll call as a dual media or multimedia filters. So we'll look at uh, the concepts of the filtration now. In the water treatment, uh, you can, through filtration, if you look at the objectives, the to remove the fine particles, flock particles here, to remove the dissolved material, to remove the turbidity and related colloidal particles. Colloidal particles means uh, less than one micron size particles. And uh, the filtration also removes uh, some microorganisms through biological action. So, the removal of colloidal biological solids through filtration is the major principle. And the normally the treatment units are used are rapid and slow sand gravity filters. What is the mechanism of filtration? Now you see here, uh, the first one is called as mechanical straining. As I said earlier, the different types of sand particles, the they are now arranged in the filter bed, right? They normally, we put some uniform size of the sand, effective size of the sand that we are going to use. And as you know here, there is some void spaces between the sand grains. When you are passing this water through this filter bed, then what you are happening is that some large particles are also there, dirty particles. They are not able to pass through the voids. They will get stopped here at the upstream side of the filter bed, only the smaller size uh, uh, particles and water, they will be passing through the, the downstream of the filter bed. So as you look at the arrangement of this uh, sand grains, it looks like that is appearing like a mechanical uh, strainer. That's why it's called as a straining. So now the second portion, the second uh, mechanism of filtration is called as the what we call as the sedimentation. What is the meaning of sedimentation here? The mechanical strain is occurring at the top layer. Now here you are going to the, the bottom, the, the top layer below the, the below the top layer now. The particles are now passing through these voids. Now here the arrangement may not be uniform. They may be zigzag. So what you see here, the particle will pass through this voids, but they are blocked here at the bottom. So they will settle down in the gap between the, these uh, sand particles at the second layer. So there's nothing but the sedimentation. Sedimentation is nothing but set settling by gravity. And the other one is the electrolytic action. The colloidal and silica particles, whatever are there in the filter sand, so they have negative charges. The water contains a different uh, the chemicals having positive and other charges. So in the when it passes through this filter bed, the positive charges of these chemicals now impurities 
they will get attached to the negative charge of the colloidal particles as well as silica particles. That is electrolytic action. Then biological action. Now, if you look at uh, the impurities of this water, so mainly they are called as inorganic materials, inorganic particles and organic particles. Inorganic means, as I said, they are sand, silt and clay. So they can be separated through physical action. What is the physical action? One is interception, that is called as mechanical straining. Another one is settling by gravity through sedimentation process or through some other electrical charges through electrolytic action over. But some organic contents are there. They're nothing but the fat, carbohydrates, and the other organic food material. The food material is mainly decomposable through bacterial or biological action. So when it passes through this water, what will happen? Because of the sticky nature, these organic particles, they will get attached onto the top surface of the filter bed. Then what will happen? The number of bacteria which is present in the water, they start feeding upon these bacteria as well as the bacteria which is present in the filter sand. So then they require some food for that. So then ultimately what will happen? This material will get decomposed and form into a reddish brown precipitate. Simultaneously, simultaneously the iron, manganese, aluminum and silica, so they also get attached to these particles. So they will give a reddish brown color to this top layer. The formation of the reddish brown layer will uh, give you an information that a biological action is uh, taking place. So this is a more important. This is responsible for uh, removal of uh, microorganisms from the filtration mechanism. How many different types of filters are there? So there are three types of filters. They are based upon the rate of filtration. One is uh, how you define filtration rate amount of water filtered per unit area. So one unit area, so one meter square of area of the filter, surface area, how much water you are filtering per hour per, per day. So usually we express in terms of liters per hour per meter square. That means per one square meter of surface area, how much of water in liters per hour you are passing through the filter bed. So the major filters which are used are rapid sand gravity filter, slow sand gravity filters. These are mainly employed in the community water treatment system. And the pressure filter is used at isolated locations for specific purposes. So you can look at uh, the filtration rate, the rapid sand filter, filtration rate is around 3,000 to 6,000 liter per hour per meter square. That means for one square meter of surface area, you can apply 3,000 to 6,000 liter per hour. Whereas slow sand gravity filter, if you see, per one meter square of surface area, you can apply only 100 to 200 liter per hour. Whereas if you go for a pressure filter, for one square meter, you can go up to 6,000 to 15,000 liters per hour. So what does it indicate? Now you look at these sketches. And now you see a pressure filter because you can apply more water per same unit area, the sizing of the pressure filter is compact. It's a small cylindrical portion. Whereas if you look at uh, the, the slow sand filter, very small amount of water can be applied per unit area. So now you can see here, you can, this is a, uh, usually relatively occupies a larger area. And comparatively, if you see uh, the rapid sand gravity filter, so it occupies a relatively a medium area between the area of pressure filter as well as slow sand gravity filter. Now, what are different types of filter media used? It's not only that uh, sand is used, some other materials are also used. And what are the properties of the sand which are going to be used here? Now, we talk about mainly the effective size of the sand. This is... Uh, defined by this D10 size. So it is equal to 0.4 to 0.6 mm per RSF, rapid sand filter, 0.2 to 0.4 per SSF, slow sand filter. The uniformity coefficient as defined 
through your soil classification is the ratio of D60 to D10. So it is 3 to 5 for slow sand filter, 1.3 to 1.7 for rapid sand filter. Because higher uh, particle size is used for, for rapid sand filter, higher value of D10. So CU value is slightly lower compared to that of the uh, slow sand filter. And the one is garnet sand is also used, having high specific gravity. So it is mainly costier, but is not used because of the high cost. It is used in combination with some other media filters. Anthracite is also used. So, but this is often is used in only in combinations. So it is also costlier than the sand. So because of these options, these anthracite and garnet sand, they are used in conjunction with the sand. Now you see this picture. Here you can observe here, more than one filter medium is used. So it's called as mixed media. If only two mediums are used, it is called as a dual media filter. What you are using here, filter coal and filter sand and the garnet medium. And gravel is used only for the support material. So they are arranged as per the specific gravity. Garnet is more heavier, so it's taken at the bottom. Relatively coal, having slightest specific gravity, then going to the top, like that. So now you can see here, this is the strainer. This is the strainer. Strain nothing but having a slotted uh, plate. So when water passes through these layers, and then passes through the slots, and then comes down to the bottom, it collected at the under drain. It's nothing but a pipe slotted pipe. You can see clearly that water droplets are indicated here. So once the water is collected through the slotted slots here in the under drain pipe, which is also a slotted pipe. So this water from all the directions, all the directions is now collected here across this, uh, the length and width of the bed. And then this under drain pipe is uh, arranged with some gravity towards one direction longitudinal slope. So automatically this entire water is collected under drain. So now you see this is the compact uh, filter which is also used, right? So what type of materials are used? Anthracite and then silica, alumina and magnetite. So some other local materials are also sometimes they are used uh, depending on the non-availability of the natural filter materials. Shredded husk, burned rice husk, crushed glass, slag, metallic ores. So out of all these things, usually the sand is the natural filter material, which is going to be used by everyone in the conventional treatment system. Right?